Hey guys, it's DC and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary where all soap lovers are welcome. This is my sanctuary reflections, life lessons learned from soaps. Today's video is play your role. This is one of the greatest things I love about doing sanctuary reflections is literally like almost any life lesson really can be tied to a soap and it allows me to do an impromptu video um, just off the cusp on the fly, you know, in between when I can't do review videos and stuff like that. Um, and I just absolutely love it. I love it, guys. I love it. You know, I was thinking today about the idea of playing a role, and I thought about the character of Mayor Laura Collins. If we look at Laura, a lot of her character from the beginning was based on Luke, the legacy of Luke and Laura, the trauma behind that, and how Laura was written as a victim for a good majority of GH up until, you know, I want to say within the past 10 years, until Jean Francis had to advocate and say, yeah, no more of this anymore. And it's understandable because as an actor or actress, when you're playing a role every day, there's a subconscious element that has to it. I don't know what people realize that you could be taking that home with you because anything you practice on a daily basis sometimes really does become you. This is why Maurice Bernard said, I can't play Sonny like this anymore. And considering the fact that he has a mental illness, bipolar disorder, who knows how that was affecting with that? I mean, Maurice Bernard did admit on a show one time that he threatened to kill his wife. You just don't know how these things are affecting people. I'm, I'm just being for real. Sonny at one point in time threatened to kill Carly. You just don't know how these things are affecting people, okay? I'm being for real. You don't know how these things are affecting people sometimes. But, you know, Jeannie Francis said, I can't do this anymore. I can't play Laura like this anymore. There's nothing in me that wants to play a victim anymore. And she literally said that on the Oprah show. And they had to change the character up. And Jeannie Francis had to advocate for herself. The type of role that you play on a daily basis a lot of times determines what you get out of life. Even recently at Luke's funeral last year, we saw how, was it last year? Last year, we saw how when Elena sent her last one testament video, Laura just quickly turned off. It's like, yep, no more of that. Like, <laughs> we're not doing that anymore. This lady has terrorized me for so many years. I'm good. You're not getting no more energy from me. I'm good. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, could write a book on it. I'm good. And there's another moment that made me have so much respect for Laura was when she advocated for Esme. Because I realized in Laura's mind, I was like, I'm not going to let no cast iron man come between a woman and her child. Even if that woman is Esme. And even if that cast iron man advocating for that separation is my grandson, I'm not going to allow it. And she saw herself in that moment. And that made me respect the hell out of her. I respected the hell out of Laura in that moment. And that was one of the main things that allowed, that had to put, that put Spencer at bay. Spencer, I mean, Esme didn't even know who she was. She was in a very vulnerable situation. Of course, Trina and Jocelyn, they, didn't, they don't care. They don't care about that. But Laura saw deeper into that. She's like, I'm not going to allow that. I'm going to advocate for this person. That's what sometimes I look sometimes me as a person. I'm a huge advocate for what's fair. Sometimes I'm in other chats or even just my personal life with family members. My mom will tell me a story and I'll try to present a devil's advocate point of view. And she's like, whose side are you on? But I believe fair is fair at times. It's really important. So I understand Laura advocating for that because now Laura is an advocate for herself. She's no longer written as a victim anymore. She's no longer written in that way anymore. And Jeannie Francis realized that for Laura's character to get out of this victim mentality, she has to stop being in the victim roles. It kind of reminded me how when I used to work in the medical field, there was a certain job I did in the medical field and I really came to despise it. And I soon had to realize like, if I don't want these type of jobs anymore, I have to stop applying for them and they have to stop getting all my energy. Yes, I got to keep working in them for, you know, until I can find something else, but they're going to get the bare minimum from, he from me from here on out. I can't give them anything more than that. And I've also learned in life nowadays that less is more. I don't have to overwork myself or extend myself. It's, it's really not necessary. And by doing that, I came to encounter more opportunities. I know some people it's hard. You work a job maybe that you don't like. You've gotta go home gather responsibilities but you gotta slowly but surely start paving that way to start making those ways happen for yourself to get into another place another paradigm and another role in your life that you want to play and sometimes it's not easy it's not easy advocating for yourself sometimes we think oh my god am i gonna lose this job am i gonna lose this person and i'm gonna lose that but then the question remains do you want things in your life that would have a problem for you advocating for the betterment of yourself and what's good for you would you really want to keep those kind of things around when, when, you, when you really think about it? Because I'm a firm believer in life is that when you start to level up, the people in your life, one of three things happen to them. They either take a back seat. They're still there in the background. Just not as much contact. Um, they level up with you or they completely dissipate because they can no longer survive in the vibration that you're in. I'm a firm believer in that. And I kind of feel like symbolically that's what happened to Luke. 
he started to slowly leave Laura's experience on GH because and now he's completely gone off campus because he couldn't survive that vibration. He liked the lore that was a victim. I, I, I believe there's some men on the sofas that love that. Like Nick Newman, he loves that. He loves that. He loves saving a woman. Some men makes it feel important, makes it feel needed. And they don't know how, what other way to express that, hey, this is what I like in a relationship without it being in somewhat of a semi-toxic kind of way or turbulent type of way because I hate using the word toxic. But Laura realized that. She had to advocate for herself. But the role that you play in your life determines what you get. You know, for me, it, it took me a while because there's a lot of times growing up, I didn't see people that looked like me or did things, and I had to be my own advocate, and it's very tough. Even now, going into a lot more of a professional fields and all this stuff, I realize I have to advocate for myself, and anything that doesn't seem right to me, I have to ask myself, DC, like, is that right for you? Even sometimes I started thinking to myself as I started in grad school, like, what if during internship year, I meet with an internship site, and they say, hey, we need everybody to have a social media or a LinkedIn. And I know that social media is not good for my mental health. What am I going to feel? But then I realized to myself, if I feel like something's not good for my mental health and a place is asking me to do that, and I understand they have their own reasons behind it. Anybody that's asked me to do something that's not, that's going to compromise after my own mental health, that's probably not the place for me. And, it's, and what they're asking is probably not a bad thing. It just doesn't work for me. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't work for me. And so that's probably not the place for me to be at. And I'm okay with that. What's for me will be for me. I won't have to chase it. I won't have to try to manipulate it, try to orchestrate it. I've gotten out of that mindset. And I've gotten out of the mindset of trying to figure out I have to know everything in the next 10 minutes. I just try to put myself in the best position to know as much as possible. And I don't rely on other people as well. Because sometimes you rely so much on other people, they become your advocate. They become the things that you need to know. You know, even my program, I notice a lot of people are still trying to figure out what they want their specialty to be in this field, all these other things. They, they, they haven't really researched these things. I have, though, because I'm not about to be sitting here waiting for these people to tell me this stuff and put my head in the sand because these people are taking care of their business. I got to take care of mine. You know, black people, I got to look out for me and mine. You know, but you got to do that. You got to look out, advocate for yourself. I remember months ago, I was talking to someone and he was a nice guy, don't get me wrong, but like he was really quiet and I'm like, oh my God, I've already... I've already dated my fair share of silent Steves. I, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. You know, I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm really good on that. And instead of me just trying to rationalize other things, I was like, I know this is something that I actually need because I can't go through that again. A lot of people in life, you'll find that people who are like no nonsense, the reason why they're like that is because they dealt with too much nonsense. Even Laura on GH, she is no nonsense. And the reason why she's like that is because she dealt with a lot of nonsense, with the cassidides and all this other stuff. She dealt with too much nonsense. So that's why she's, she's no nonsense at this point. So that's when Helena was like, I have a mystery for you and for Luke and for Laura. And she just quickly turned off that monitor. I was like, yep, no more of that. No more of that. I don't even care what she has to say. <laughs> so, yep, we're good off of that. Who wants drinks? <laughs> because Laura's like, there's nothing to miss out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm advocating for myself, but you got to think about the role that you play in your life, the role that you play around the people that you're around. And it's hard to advocate for yourself. It's like a muscle. You know, like when you go to the gym, you work out a muscle, it starts to get bigger over time because you are constantly stretching out. You are constantly practicing with it. And it's the same with everything else in your life. You've got to do that same thing. One of the reasons why I have a morning routine is not because it's fun or it's cool to say it. It's because it's necessary. It helps me deal with some things that are sometimes very challenging for me. And it's the same thing in our personal lives. We have to be able to, we have to be able to advocate for ourselves. It's a muscle. You gotta sometimes practice saying no. You gotta practice sometimes saying something like, yeah, like I gotta go. Sometimes those little things, you gotta practice it at times. And sometimes we're worried that, oh my God, if I say this, the person's gonna think I'm rude or are they gonna think this? No, you're respecting yourself. And if anybody who has a problem with you respecting yourself or honoring yourself and your own commitments is maybe not somebody who should be in your experience. So anyways, guys, this is my DC Soap Sanctuary, Sanctuary Reflections. Play your role. I'm out.